What's up guys, Chris Schwartz Edmondson here from Schwartz Edmondson Web Design. In today's tutorial, we're gonna be looking at two ways to deal with vertical logos with fixed headers. So oftentimes the client will want a fixed header, but they'll present you with a vertical oriented logo. Um, and the problem with that is, if I comment out the CSS real quick, Uh, the problem with that when we is when we scroll down the page, the header is covering you know a lot of the content on the page. So we need to figure out a way to make this fixed header smaller. Uh, and so I'm going to be showing two ways of doing that today. So the first is to just shrink the logo on scroll. Uh, that shrinks up the fixed header um, and makes it so that less content is being covered up by the fixed header. And the other way is by replacing the logo on scroll and just uh, replacing it with a more horizontally oriented logo. So we're gonna be looking at both of these methods in today's tutorial. Okay, so for the first method, we're gonna go ahead and shrink the header on scroll. So I'm gonna right click on the header and click inspect, and we can just look at the HTML and the structure of the page. So uh, I'm gonna scroll up here until I find the header announcement bar drop zone container. Uh, and actually we want this header announcement bar wrapper container. So uh, when the header is at the top of the page, we don't have that shrink class, but as soon as you scroll down, the header gets this uh, header announcement bar wrapper shrink class added to it. Um, and so that's what we're gonna use. When that shrink class is added, that's how we're going to then tell Squarespace to shrink the size of the logo. So let's go ahead and uh, we'll navigate down until we find the class of the logo itself. Uh, so here's the header, header title, then we have the header title logo, um, then we have a link, and then we have the image itself. So uh, what we're going to do is uh, basically they're controlling the, the size of the logo by controlling the maximum height that the logo can be. So what we'll do is simply uh, scale this down. So instead of a max height of 97, we'll set it to like a max height of 30, for example, which is really small. Uh, once that shrink class is added and that makes sure that the height of the uh, whole header itself gets much smaller. So the first thing that we'll do, let's just go ahead and copy. I'll just copy all of this CSS. Um, that way I don't have to write it from scratch since this is the element that we want to target anyway. So we want to target the image that's within the header title logo container. And so we will set the max height. That was a little bit, 30 was a little bit small. Let's go ahead and set it to 50 pixels. And since this is the only property that we're changing, we don't even need to relist these two properties. Squarespace already has those on the style sheet. So now all we have to do is go back up uh, to the header wrapper, the header announcement bar wrapper. And so we are going to target the header announcement bar wrapper. So I'll copy that class. And we target classes with a period with CSS. So now we also have to add the shrink. So when the header announcement bar wrapper also has the shrink class, we're going to target the logo container and specifically we're gonna target the image within that logo container. And we're gonna make sure that its max height is only 50 pixels. So if I save that and go ahead and reload the frame so that all my style sheet styles reset, uh, if I scroll down, we now have, boom, it jumps down to being only 50 pixels, having a max height of 50 pixels. So if you like that kind of like abrupt switch, that abrupt change, uh, then you're done. This is all you need. Um, but if you want it to be a little bit smoother, um, we're gonna set up a transition. So the first thing that we have to do is figure out like what transition is uh, the rest of the header using. Um, so we have to find another property that is being changed. 
So um, one way that we can do that easily is if I go ahead and edit the site header and I go to colors, I'm going to toggle on transparency because this we know that there's an animation when the header is transparent for it to then have a colored background. So I'll just copy the see how the colored background gets animated on. So I'll just copy the transition from that um, transition that's already set up. And that way our scaling will match the transitions for the rest of the header. So here we go. The transition is, let's see. We'll have it match the padding, um, which is 140 milliseconds and it's an ease in out. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy that transition. Um, and so now all we have to do is target the header announcement bar wrapper uh, without the shrink class. So we're gonna copy all of that, but without the shrink class. So I'm gonna copy all of that and paste it above and we'll replace our Transition, transition, command V to paste that in there. And now for the thing that we're transitioning is the max height. Perfect. And now I'm going to remove the dot shrink class. So when you add transitions in CSS, you want to add it to basically like the non animated state. So when we add the shrink class, that's kind of like the animated state where we're changing the max height. But when you set up the transition, you want it to be set up on basically the original state. So now uh, when we scroll down, we have this nice animation here. It's not so abrupt. So I'll go ahead and edit the site header and I will change the color back to just my white header and hit save. Sweet. So that's a way that you can set up a nice little animation there. Um, another thing that we could do to get the header even smaller is uh, you can see this header announcement bar. Um, this container has the padding on it. So as we scroll down, we could also decrease the padding on the top and the bottom. Um, so on this fixed state, so one way we could do that is just to add some curly brackets here. And I'll delete this second curly bracket and I'll drop it down below. So the nice thing about Squarespace is it uses the less preprocessor. So we can do cool things like nesting. Um, so this syntax here is exactly as we had it before, but now we can write some styles for just this container. Um, we don't have to like change our styling around. So now we can just do target the padding top and we'll change it to, I don't know, like five pixels. Uh, and then we'll do the padding bottom and we'll also do five pixels and um, we're going to have to add some important tags because our styling is not specific enough to make that change. Cool. So like now we've really got the header out of the way. And of course you could change this, like maybe we'll go 15 pixels, looks a little bit better. A um, little more padding, but less padding than there was before. Um, so that's a nice way to get like a big vertical logo that a client has, uh, much smaller with a fixed header. So it's not covering up so much content when you scroll down the page. That's something I hate, that's a horrible user experience when there's a big fixed header that covers like half the content on the screen. Um, so this is a nice way to kind of like get that content out of the way. Okay. So that was number one. Uh, there might be another scenario where the client has a different version of the logo. Um, and so like they might request the more horizontal version of the logo as the website scrolls down, as opposed to making their logo much smaller like this, like they might not like that solution. Um, so the next thing we'll go over is how to load a different version of the logo. So uh, to do this, we're going to be using my alternate logo uh, with transparent header 
uh, tutorial, we're going to be using CSS from that tutorial. Um, so I'll go ahead and I'll make sure that this is in a blog post. Um, so if you want to use this CSS, go ahead and check out the description below this video. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and comment out this CSS so it's not interfering with the CSS that we're about to write. Okay. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and copy this CSS from the blog post. And we're going to be adapting this slightly. Um, so go ahead and check out that other tutorial. Um, you can go to the blog post on my website or you can check it out on my YouTube channel. Uh, it's the videos in both places. So I'll go ahead and paste that in. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and delete these brackets. So we don't we don't need that styling. Okay, so basically here, um, what we're doing is we're, we're targeting the link. And I'm going to go ahead and remove that. Um, so we're targeting if I go ahead and inspect the logo. So we're we're targeting this header element container here, uh, which is inside the header title logo. So basically, we're saying within this header announcement bar wrapper container, look for the header title logo container, and then look for the link within that container. And what we're going to do is we're going to place a new image on that container, but we're only going to replace that new image uh, when the header announcement bar wrapper has the shrink class. So I'm going to go ahead and add the shrink class, which again is just Squarespace's way of saying we've scrolled down the page a little bit. So now in this content URL, you can see it says your image link here. So what you would then do is go ahead and uh, delete this. Uh, click your cursor in between the quotation marks and then go down to the manage custom files and then you would upload the alternate version of your logo. Uh, so for example, I have this more horizontal version. Um, and so as I scroll down the page, you can see it's loading the horizontal version uh, as soon as we the shrink class has been added to the header. So that's just kind of a nice way of like going from a more vertical uh, orientation to a horizontal orientation. Now you can't add a transition here, like there's no way to fade in between the two images. Um, so that's kind of the only drawback with this method. Um, and so then the other thing you would probably want to do is go ahead and um, set the max width on this uh, container as well. So you can, or the max height, excuse me. So you can see this this uh, container here, this link container has a max height as well. Um, so what we'd wanna do is just go ahead and when the shrink class is added, set a max height of let's say like 40 pixels. So as the pages scroll down that container, um, you know, the logo isn't quite so big. So of course you can change this around if you want it to be a little bit smaller, throw in like 30 pixels, something like that. But again, it's a really nice way to kind of, um, you're not sacrificing logo size that way. <laughs> so the nice thing about this method is you're not sacrificing the logo size that way. Like we're not just shrinking down this vertical logo. We're like making it smaller, but we're also going to like a better orientation for the logo. So of course, again, you could uh, target the padding here um, by just opening up some curly brackets here around all of this. And then we can change the padding top as we did before. Let's do 15 pixels again, and we'll do the padding bottom of 15 pixels. And we have to add the important tag to make sure that the style is rendered. Okay, there we go. So it's a little bit more abrupt than the animated version, but it's kind of nice. Uh, I think that looks nice. Um, so two methods there for shrinking your fixed header. 
uh, when the client has a vertically oriented logo.